This is a snake named Sis. S is one of the most common sounds in the English language, so it makes sense to teach it early. For, all, for many years, I worked in schools on Native American reservations. The goal was to help improve reading skills in the elementary grades. The tools were reading and language arts programs sold by leading publishers. But Native children in some schools using the reading program with Sis the Snake weren't doing well. As I talked with teachers, I learned that snakes are taboo for some Native cultures. In fact, one of my friends will drive miles out of the way to avoid a road where she saw a snake cross. Because of this cultural belief, some teachers wouldn't use any of the stories with a snake. That meant children weren't learning the S sound or any of the sounds in stories that had a snake. Owls are often used to teach the OW sound, but owls are also taboo for many tribes. They symbolize death a bad omen. Unfortunately, it's not cost-effective for publishers to develop classroom materials for many different cultural communities. Reading helps children learn about the world around them, but beginning readers struggle if the words in a story aren't words, that, words they've heard before. They need stories with words from their own cultural communities. While only four out of 10 fourth grade students in the US read on their grade level, sadly, only two out of 10 fourth grade students of color read on grade level. Research suggests limited access to culturally relevant materials might be part of the problem. In an effort to find a solution to this problem, we interviewed hundreds of teachers in tribally operated schools throughout the US. Teachers told us they wanted stories their students could connect with, stories with characters that looked like them, stories that would increase and support cultural identity, lessons that kept students engaged. And while they wanted their students to learn to read proficiently in English, they also wanted children to learn to read, write, and speak in the language of their heritage. Many tribes do have children's books about their cultures, but effective, culturally bound beginning reading programs are scarce. And in many tribes, too few people speak or read the language of their heritage at home or in their communities. To change this picture, language revitalization needs to focus on children. With funding from the National Science Foundation, my team and I are developing a software solution to help cultural communities revitalize and retain their languages. The software can be used to develop lessons using stories and words from their own cultures. These culturally bound stories can be used to teach vocabulary, reading, writing, and speaking skills in any language, including English. To do this, we use natural language processing and machine learning to analyze a language. The software is language agnostic. This means it can be used to analyze any language in which symbols represent sounds. The software counts the frequencies of sounds, words, and phrases in a language. This language database can then be used to make recommendations for writing stories. Connected sequences of these stories are used to teach beginning reading skills. This language analysis is a challenging process when the written form of a language looks much different than English. For example, many indigenous languages are polysynthetic. This means several individual words are put together to form one long word that has more meaning. One thing that helps us analyze indigenous languages is that each symbol or combination of symbols makes only one sound, as opposed to English, where the O-U-G-H combination can make at least six different sounds and R-E-A-D can be pronounced read or read. When the language database is created, additional information called n-grams are saved. N-grams are sequences of words found in a language. So three grams are three word phrases. These n-grams help in writing phonics-based stories to teach beginning reading skills. When the story writer types a word, the software shows the phrases that could potentially come next but those phrases only include sounds children have already learned. In other words, if children have not yet been taught the M sound, the phrases shown will not include the M sound. 
The words that can be used in stories are limited to sounds students know. We are testing our software with a couple of tribes that have few remaining fluent native speakers. The story writers learned English first and may not be fluent writing stories in the language of their heritage. Developing culturally bound stories in their language or in English, limited to sounds that have already been taught, is much easier with the support provided by engrams. Because the story writers may not be experts in developing effective lessons for teaching vocabulary, reading, writing, or spelling, or in creating assessments to measure a learner's progress, the software does the heavy lifting. The software guides story writers as they write culturally bound stories. It recommends appropriate sequencing for the introduction of sounds and words. It suggests words and phrases limited to the sounds students have been taught. It keeps track of sounds and words across stories to ensure learners get enough practice to successfully learn reading skills. It creates activities so learners can practice their new skills. The software guides story writers as they develop sets of stories that will help students break the code for learning to read. Our technology also creates games for preschool children and older language learners. Puzzle games on mobile devices can expose young children to sounds their parents may not speak. Many indigenous languages have sounds foreign to our ears, and parents who learn their language as adults may struggle to hear and repeat those sounds. Children learn another language most effectively when they learn the sounds and words at a young age, and a two-year-old can do amazing things with games on a smartphone. The world is filled with disappearing languages and cultures. Over half of the languages in the world are endangered. Tribes would say they are hibernating or going to sleep. Worldwide, we lose two languages every month. Thousands of languages used to be spoken on this continent. Fewer than 200 indigenous languages remain. With this loss of language also comes loss of culture, information about families, history, religion, traditions, migration patterns, medicine, farming, foods, and so much more. Many tribes and organizations are working to document endangered languages. Some indigenous languages are being recovered from wax recordings made over 100 years ago, or from journals written by missionaries and researchers in the 18 and 1900s. Most indigenous languages were oral. They were not written until after World War II, so documenting is only the first step. Revitalizing languages needs to include reading, writing, and speaking. Languages matter. Cultures matter. Representation matters. Harmony never exists with just one note. One reading program doesn't work best for everyone. Cultural communities ne need technology tools as they work to revitalize and retain their native languages. As one elder from the Quileute tribe wrote to us, the oldest sound in the entire world is the sound of waves breaking on the beach. Next is the mother's tongue. I can still hear the waves. Grandmother has been silent too long. <laughs>